Yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks for being here. It's nothing short of miraculous with the nice weather outside and, and after such a long day, but very grateful. Uh, I'm Catherine and this is my colleague Jenny with, um, from the University of Luxembourg. And we've tried to keep it light and possibly a bit shorter than scheduled. So if you don't see any literature references, it's not because we haven't based anything on literature. It's actually in the book chapter and the proceeding that we um, published earlier. So if you want uh, references, it'll be in there. But otherwise, it gets a bit heavy once you start going into theory. So we would like to focus on the practical aspects, aspects of what we did and then kind of engage in a conversation to kind of pick your brains as well about um, you know, what you do and, and how, how you see this working in your context or how you can give us some ideas to make it work even better. Uh, so um, what we're presenting today is a research article writing course that's been run for a couple of semesters very successfully uh, and we gathered a lot of uh, feedback. Um, I will be talking you through how it's organised, um, so the format and how we deliver it and Jenny will then uh, um, continue about the kind of feedback that we got specifically um, focusing on the uh, flipped approach aspect uh, of it. Okay. Okay. So a few things about the course which are important to know. Uh, research article writing. It's credit bearing. I think this is vital for the whole concept uh, because you can make people do things <laughs> and you can make them attend. Yeah. Uh, which is vital for the flipped approach. <laughs> people show up without having prepared and then where are you? Uh, it's for PhD students and this is important in, in how I, I, I designed um, you know, um, the course. Um, students are at different campuses so to uh, ensure that they don't waste a lot of time traveling uh, we try to limit the number of face-to-face -face or online sessions, the actual workshop sessions, there were only six. Um, we assume that most PhD students, uh, most of them are in their second year because they have to be writing on a research article already. They, they can work independently, that's another premise. And that they are motivated, that's another <laughs> premise um, to, to do work. Uh, groups are multidisciplinary. Jenny this morning talked about the interdisciplinary, uh, the peer review. The peer review, that's actually also part of, it's part of this course that she was talking about. Uh, but this also means that we have to build in a certain level of personalization because the materials are for many disciplines, but our concept allows for things to be personalized. It's 10 weeks and a maximum of 10 participants, which is a bit restrictive. Um, demand outstrips <laughs> what, what we can offer really with our very limited human resources. So these are the main learning outcomes. They will sound pretty familiar, I think. We would like to generate insight into the writing and publication process, uh, help uh, people create more coherent, concise, and reader-friendly texts, uh, help them understand article section structure and why it's like that in their field and their target journals, uh, so that they can also adapt to disciplinary conventions. Um, very important for them is also that they've got some basic corpus research techniques um, that they can use to explore uh, language and <coughs> disciplinary conventions and um, I think this is really crucial for us that they kind of get some tools to become more uh, autonomous and reflective about their own writing so they can continue to develop beyond our input. It's not a language course at all and we just state that very specifically that they've got to be at B2 already. So how does this flipped classroom approach work? There are uh, four basic components. So there's the book, based on that they do tasks, I'll go into detail in a second. Then there's a workshop related to the tasks and, and the book content, writing and reflection submissions, peer review, and then a one-to-one -one consultation. The book, uh, it's an e-book, it's just a fancy word for a book that, <laughs> that I wrote and that's available uh, on, on the VLE. Um, it's based on many years of experience teaching research article writing and my knowledge of publications on research article writing and academic writing in general. 
um, as I said, it's the details can be found in uh, these two publications. Okay. So what happens before any workshop? We uh, on a particular chapter, we ask students to read the theory in the ebook. In the ebook, there are exercises with keys. They don't have to submit those. Uh, there are exercises which introduce them to uh, some corpus work. Um, part of the tasks uh, for one chapter of the publication and the writing process is also an interview with a disciplinary expert or a more senior researcher. And I've decided that's a way also to force supervisors to talk to their students. <laughs> yeah? So I've given them a number of questions that they can ask in addition to whatever else they want to ask the supervisor or a senior researcher. But the vital thing for us is that um, all this theory from the book is applied to their own writing. <coughs> Hence, they have to already be writing a research article. Yeah. I'll uh, illustrate what I mean by that. So we call these independent learning tasks, which happen before the workshop. So in the chapter in the ebook, there's a a chapter called Crafting Clear Sentences. This might be one example where they're prompted to apply what they've just read to their own um, writing. So it says, examine your long sentence. They had to pick the longest sentence in a particular part and examine your long <coughs> sentence from exercise. Uh, based on your learning from this chapter, revise the sentence to reduce complexity and length. The chapter is basically two parts, reducing complexity and managing um, a length. Um, explain your changes, paste the original here, along with a clearer version and your explanation of the changes. Okay. This is then vital because we, it gives us lots of materials already for the workshop. So that, that allows us to per personalise. What also allows us to personalise, to tailor mm, the course to the specific group that we've got in front of us is that at the end of each chapter, uh, I ask, uh, what other questions do you still have about the writing process? Do you have about crafting clear sentences? And that's also interesting. It in informs materials development too. Yeah, I keep changing uh, the book. Okay. So we have all of that. It's submitted a week ahead of the actual workshop. Yeah, and then uh, what the lecturers do is to look at the. the that, especially the application to their own writing. And then from that, from um, the applications and also any writing that they've submitted up to that point, we use that to illustrate, to, so to recap the main theory points with examples from that particular group, from those 10 students, and to create consolidation activities where they work together yeah, in, in groups as well or in pairs. So um, here's, here's my longest sentence, or you know, this is what I did, do you think I can do anything more, for example, or this is how I reduced complexity. And of course, the whole idea is that the workshop should offer some added value, things that can't be found in the book. Mm -hmm. And so this is the time for exchanges, learning from each other, but also asking us uh, questions. Okay. This system works really well. But as we'll see later, it's a lot of work <laughs> for us. Yeah. There are also um, regular submissions of um, the article that they're writing on, along with uh, reflections. Um, oh no, this is a, I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is, for example, what we would do in the workshop. Um, this is a key theory point. One thing is, you know, you can make a sentence easier to process by br bringing the meaningful subject forward. And so reducing or repositioning long introductory elements. That would be a student sentence that we got from the task. Yeah. And then I give them that as an example, an alternative. We talk about that. And then um, a consolidation activity might be consider the following in identifying structure that might be uh, postponed uh, and then there's an activity with student sentences where they actually work on their own sentences and then discuss with each other how they've changed that students really love that concept yeah, the personalized aspect of it 
Uh, the writing is uh, regular submissions and also reflections on learning. They're, they're guided with a few questions, so how they've applied what they've learned so far in the workshops and the theory. Okay. The peer review is self-organised, so it's multidisciplinary groups and they can organise themselves when they meet. Um, we tell them the group has to be X number of students, but they choose who to work with. We're not involved in supervising that at all. We do provide a template and kind of a rationale for peer review, what the value is, and they have to submit a report. And it's part of the report as well that Jenny kind of sometimes you get comments about how valuable uh, that um, has been. Yeah. The final uh, bit is during the course they can book a slot. Um, well, they have to book a one-to-one -one consultation. This was optional uh, to start with, but s students who did take the consultations found them very valuable, and other students so missed out because they thought they didn't have the time, so we decided to make them uh, compulsory. Do you have any questions about the, the setup? Because this might come... Um, I must say, we do take care to explain this very carefully to students. So we have a, a nice handout with all the, the components and the expectations um, explained because I think you can kind of see that it's a pretty intricate <laughs> setup. Yeah. So the flipped aspect is actually that they've worked through the theory and submitted a task before they come to class and then we get into uh, the nitty gritty in the workshop. Can you just explain how what's, how you said that the writing reflection was in groups? Did you not know? No, no, that's a peer review. Okay. So the writing and the reflection is something they submit individually. Okay. So, for example, after a couple of chapters, um, it's time to submit a, a bit of their research article, whatever bit that they're working on. And then if we've dealt, for example, with crafting clear sentences or writing more concisely, they would have to point out particularly how the writing that they're submitting now reflects that learning. Okay. So no chat GPT. But they can, <laughs> they can use then those writing submissions in the peer review or as the text that they submit for the consultation. So again, there's the sort of um, interchange between those yeah. other components. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned chat GPT. Yeah, they it's already ticking through the way you're doing this. They actually can use. We'll come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cliffhanger. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Um, <laughs> that is my part. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I know, I know, no. To go. Okay, I'll hand over. <laughs> okay. No, sorry, I didn't. Know. <laughs> Yes, so I'm going to talk about the course feedback and actually for the first um, two or three semesters that we were teaching this, we also had a Qualtrics um, survey that we gave the students post-course and I'm not going to talk about that today because we already talked about it in uh, two years ago and that can be found in the proceedings. Sorry. Um, that can be found in the proceedings um, and it's also in the chapter that's in the references at the end of, uh, at the end of these slides so you can um, have a look if you're interested. So what I am going to talk about is the um, evaluations that are um, that transferable skills ask the students to do post course. Um, so this covers 10 classes over five semesters, so we do have quite a lot of data. We've got 92 responses to have a look at. And their evaluation mostly uh, takes the form of Likert scale questions, with one being strongly disagree and seven being strongly agree. And these are actually quite useful for us. So to the question, uh, would you recommend this course to others? Over the course of five semesters, we score 6.4 on average, which I think we're pretty happy with. Yeah. Um, and then again, 6.4 on average uh, to the question, are they satisfied with the competences and knowledge gained on the course? So those 
questions are useful, but actually what I'm going to talk about today is the open questions that are on the survey, because I think from this you can really see actually what is it that the students prioritise. In our Qualtrics survey, we got them to really dig deep on the specific components of the course that Catherine has just outlined. But in this, it's kind of a free flow, so you really get a much better perspective of what is it that they want to tell us and they, they also don't necessarily think it's us, they think it's transferable skills. So it, that's also quite useful. So um, if we have a look at this first one, we can see that in general they like the fact that they feel prepared when they enter the classroom. And uh, this is a benefit because when they come into the class they have a shared um, sort of foundational knowledge um, between them that means we're not having to spend the time doing the theory and we can kind of pick up and run with it uh, relatively quickly. Um, so that's uh, one of those advantages that they have also seen uh, with no prompting from us. And then uh, this second uh, set really shows kind of the three steps of the flipped approach that we hoped to implement and so that's why I've, I've drawn them out of some of their comments. So firstly it helps a lot by giving enough examples in the ebook so they do feel supported by the number of examples that are there so they can see how the theory applies to texts generally. And then this second one I benefited the most from independent learning tasks asking a student to rework his her initial text. So then that they're using then this theory as a next step and applying it to their own writing. So we're getting them to um, really work with their own uh, texts and uh, revise them in a way that thinks about the, the process as this iterative process. And then we're using what they submit, as Catherine has said, for what this student has called those personal lectures. So we're using these consolidation tasks in class sort of working a little bit more intensively with their writing so again it's not just take this theory apply it now you're done it's take this apply it work it rework it so this idea that it's this iterative process is is really useful for those students who might not be used to doing that and then in this last one what we have is the kind of the split in the evaluation surveys between uh, students who said it's the theoretical work that they really like, and this tends to be often be that they have identified in the theory that we've provided in the chapters, things that they have often identified themselves, or had instructors say to them, you need to work on your conciseness, or uh, the coherence of this text is poor. So they've either had it pointed out to them, or they've self-identified some of the theory that they need, and then the second half of this, um, uh, this quote here is that they then enjoy the group work. And with the group work, they're doing that in the classroom. And that's because of the flipped approach, we can really maximise the time that they have to do this in class. And again, if we look at this first quote, I like the actual examples from students we use in our class. We're taking the um, things that they submit as part of the independent learning task. We're getting them to work on them again, and not just on their own, so we can highlight particular individual issues that they might like to work on, but we're getting them to work on it with um, other peers. So they're working on things in groups collaboratively, as Catherine has explained, um, to really then revise their texts again. So we're working quite intensively with their work. And this is useful because um, we are essentially simulating this iterative process of writing um, and sort of asking our students to do it in the way that we would like them to do it. And not just that they are revising their text, but also they are using the human resources that are available to them. So what comes out quite strongly in the evaluations is the benefit that they see with working with their peers, from working with their peers. And they particularly like the varied perspectives um, that that brings. So seeing their work, their work and their writing through the eyes um, of others. And um, as I said in my uh, talk this morning, uh, they, they find particular benefit in um, these kind of multidiscipline um, 
configurations of, of the course and they enjoy these discussions. Um, and what's really interesting is we had wondered, so quite a lot of this course took place online during Corona and we wondered whether the number of comments about how uh, important and valuable discussions were to them would remain when we move back into the into the classroom and they have so this interaction it doesn't sort of necessarily seem to matter whether it's online or face to face uh, but it's seen as a real um, benefit and um, there's been other talks about you know just giving them the space to really talk about their work and perhaps their anxieties of themselves as uh, writers so of course with any model there are some drawbacks and uh, for our students it's really the, the regularity of coursework submissions that seem to be problematic and for those who have time management issues this is this is quite a challenge and it's on one side, those students that we have to spend time sort of chasing up and saying, you know, the deadline was midday. And of course, it's important to us because we've got to take their work and to put it into those personalized sessions. So it's, it's quite important for us to stay on top of it and really chase them. Um, so I've just forgotten what my next book is. Um, so yes, because we, we noted uh, how demanding this course is we also see that it's important to um, give appropriate credits and we've actually increased the number of credits to three uh, in the last year I think or last year and a half or so um, which has actually resulted in a better score so in winter semester 2022 to the question um, uh, did they agree with how manageable uh, the workload was it actually scored 6.3 so even though in what would you improve about this course, regularity of coursework comes up, actually the, the Likert scale question suggests that we're getting it right now with giving them three ECTS. However, because it's credit bearing and it's three of the 20 credits that these students need to accrue during their doctoral studies, you do get some students on the course who are more there for the credits than to improve their writing. And so again, it's these students that not only we have to chase in terms of submission, but very often for the quality of the work that they are giving us. And so again, we circle back to this idea of we're personalising this. The more you help us, the more we can help you. So chasing uh, students does um, take us some time. And the other significant time burden is the personalisation of the, the lessons. So we're not having to do this just once, but over the duration of the course. And so what you need are reliable, committed, motivated staff who are prepared to do that over the course of, of 10 weeks. And I'm lucky to have that. Yes, you yeah. are. Jenny <laughs> and Frank. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but having said that, <laughs> there's always a flip side in this flip model. Um, because even though we're doing that on a, on a regular basis, what we don't have is a significant marking load at the end. Well, we don't have marking. So um, they can use their writing submissions for the consultation. They can use their writing submissions for the peer review. But we're not having to grade their text. And actually, that's something that I'm very grateful for. So that's a real positive for me. So in summary, then, the flip classroom model offers this independent personalized learning and it also helps to maximize class time for student interaction which then becomes very student centered so this I think is a real um, positive positive. Um, and again as I said these, this interaction continues to be important even though we have kind of half shifted back to the face-to-face -face model and it's worth saying here that this semester uh, we offered or we are offering one online class and one face-to-face -face class and the online class um, was subscribed to or signed up to much more quickly and oversubscribed in comparison to the face-to-face. -face. So I think for us this really presents potential questions about the form of this flip model going forward uh, and also this needs analysis of you know what, what do the students need. Often it's a, a time constraint for them to have to, to travel to class. So, on that note about thinking how we can move forward with the course, we would like to finish here and ask for 
any um, wonderful piece of, of advice um, or your experience, whether positive or negative, about how to manage independent personalised learning. So we will, we could perhaps start the conversation from there and thank you very much for your time. Thank you.